What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, Qualcomm released what they're calling the world's fastest mobile CPU. And they're calling it the Snapdragon 8 Elite. You might have heard of this chip. A lot of manufacturers are already putting out devices over in China with this new SoC. I've actually got my hands on a couple different devices with this chipset, but at the time of making this video, cannot reveal exactly what they are. Embargo is in about two weeks from now, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. But with this upgrade in performance on these new mobile chips, I definitely had to make a quick video to show some of this stuff off, specifically when it comes to gaming and emulation performance. And when I say emulation, yeah, I'm talking about retro games, uh, you know, some of the higher end stuff here and there. But one thing that this chip does really well is x86 emulation. So I'm talking about running PC games in Android with this new chipset. And when it comes down to it, I did want to kind of give you an overview here because it is a new Snapdragon chip. And on the channel, we try to take a look at all of them that come out. Last year was the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and there's still manufacturers pushing that. That CPU is definitely not a slouch, but what they've done here with the 8 Elite is pretty impressive. They're calling this the Orion CPU, and the arrangement here is a bit different from what we've seen in the past with their 8 Gen series from the Gen 1 up to the Gen 3. Usually, they pack in some efficiency cores, but with this new chip, we don't have any efficiency. They've done away with it completely. We've got two big prime cores with a clock up to 4.32 gigahertz. And if you remember correctly, with the highest end Gen 3 on the market, they did have an X core or a prime core that clocked up to 3.3 gigahertz. But if you take a look here, the performance cores, all six of them that we get along with this are even higher than that, going up to 3.53. And they've added 24 megabytes of L2 cache to this mobile CPU. We've also got a really nice upgrade on the GPU side of things here with that new Adreno GPU, up to 40% faster, 40% power savings, and there's a 35% increase in ray tracing performance. And for real, when it comes to ray tracing on mobile devices, it's still not there yet for some real ray tracing like we'd see on an RTX 4070 and up, but it's a step in the right direction. This uses three slices clocked up to 1.1 gigahertz. Now, I will admit that I thought we'd see a much higher performance increase on the GPU when you compare it to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Really, where we're getting that big performance gain here is the CPU itself. And I can show you right here with some benchmarks that I ran. So over on the left-hand side, we've got the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's actually the highest-end Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Samsung. Single core, 2,271. Multi, still looking great here with a 7,100. But moving over to that new 8 Elite, you can see we've topped that single core by quite a bit, bringing it up over 3,000. So 3,133 and multi-core here, breaking the 10,000 mark on a Snapdragon chip. This is some really impressive synthetic performance that we're seeing. So across the board here, we're getting real close to a 40% increase in single and multi-core performance when you compare it to that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now it's time to take a look at some GPU performance here with 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. And again, I figured we'd see a much higher jump in performance. Now it's still a bit early and the firmware that I'm using is not finalized, but with Wildlife Extreme, the 8 Gen 3 scored a 4,942, the 8 Elite 5,977. I've got a feeling that with 3D Mark, something is actually holding this benchmark back just a little bit with this new chipset because when we move over to Antutu, you can see over on the 8 Gen 3, we scored a 1,787,000. On the 8 Elite, 2,938,000. And if you take a look down the list here, we've got our CPU score. Got a nice bump there. But on that GPU, you can see that the 8 Elite is over 1.2 million just on that score alone. And that 8 Gen 3 is right there at 683,000. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the future with these benchmark suites for Android. And especially applications and games, because I'll admit it, when it comes to Android and even the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, we don't have a lot of applications and games that can take advantage of the power these chips are putting out. And now that we've got the Snapdragon 8 Elite, anything on the market is going to be fully playable, maxed out. Any of the games, at least right now, that are on Google Play. And I think a lot of developers have kind of stayed away from Android when it comes to like PC ports as opposed to iOS, because when it comes down to it, Android is so fragmented. You can buy a $20 Android phone from Walmart right now and play a bunch of games on it. But it's not going to run something like Genshin Impact at full speed. Most of the time, you can't even hit 30 with it at low settings. And even with a game like this, which is definitely one of the harder ones to run, very high settings, 60 FPS on Android, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 can also do the same thing. 
We're maxed out there on the 8 Gen 3, so we're also maxed out here on the 8 Elite. But being able to run this at a lower power consumption on the 8 Elite than the Gen 3 is awesome. I mean, we can get much better battery life out of something like this. And in my full review of this device, I will take a look at battery life, heat, and everything like that. But now I wanted to move over to some emulation. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at was some x86 PC game emulation. I'll have a full video coming up. I've got a bunch of games running, but this is one that's kind of easy for anybody to get up and running. Fallout 4 Game of the Year. This is the GOG version. So this is the real Fallout 4 PC game running in Android using a modified version of the WinLater application. And if you're not familiar with WinLater, basically it allows you to run x86 applications and games inside of Android. This is a very early access build. That's why we've got some weird stuff going on there. But this is the only one that I could get working with the 8 Elite right now. And performance here is pretty awesome. Albeit, we are at 720p low settings, but to run this at 60 in Android, I mean, we're emulating this PC game inside of Android right now at or over 60 FPS, and it only dipped under every once in a while. Even when launching nukes in this game, which, you know, takes a toll on lower end CPUs, even when running this natively on an x86 platform. This is pretty impressive if you ask me, and like I mentioned, I've got a bunch of other games running. I've tested several, a lot of them didn't work, but what I've got working right now with this alpha build of WinLater that works with the Snapdragon 8 Elite, I will have a video coming up very soon, so keep an eye on the channel. But so far, when it comes to emulation on Android, this thing is putting down some really great performance. Next up, I wanted to take a look at the Dolphin emulator. We've got Auto Modalista right here, and on this Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, I've been able to go up to 4x, which is really kind of maxing this out for an Android device. When this game is running at 4x the resolution of the native GameCube resolution, this is actually at 2560 by 2112 which is a higher resolution than most Android screens right now, but I wanted to show you what this 8 Elite can do because I thought it was pretty impressive inside of the Dolphin emulator from settings. And by the way, I'm using the official Dolphin emulator here. It's not a modified version. OpenGL back in. We'll go to our enhancements. Internal resolution. I'm running this game at 6x native resolution, which is 4K for GameCube or 3840 by 3168 on a mobile CPU at 60 FPS. And the only way I could record the screen right now from this device that I have is 1080 up to 120 hertz. So it might not be putting off that 4K look, but just even on the screen itself, which isn't 4K, it is a super clean image when it comes to GameCube emulation in Android. And the final one I wanted to look at was some PS2 emulation using the Neither SX2 emulator. It's kind of looking like we're seeing the same performance that we are on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So this kind of tells me that, you know, the emulator itself isn't taking advantage of what we have here with the 8 Elite. God of War 2, 4X resolution, that's what we can run it at on the Snapdragon 8 Elite. If I go up to 5X, we do get some dips under 60 there. Now I'm sure with other games, we could take it up to 5X and even 6X with some easier to emulate games. But right now it kind of looks like performance is on par, at least with the emulator we have right now. When it comes down to it, it looks like the Snapdragon 8 Elite is a nice upgrade over the Gen 3. And of course, we thought we'd see a bump in performance on the CPU and GPU. That's what happens every year. I kind of wasn't expecting that CPU performance jump that we saw with this. I think it's a really nice step in the right direction for Qualcomm. And putting efficiency aside, we'll take a look at that in my full review. When it comes to strictly performance, right now the 8 Elite is way more than enough for anything over on the Google Play Store. So that's going to be the next issue. More power than we know what to do with it when it comes to getting stuff directly from the store. Higher end emulators, definitely a different story, but I think we need some more PC ports over to Android. And iOS got pretty lucky with uh, Capcom doing all the Resident Evil stuff. Uh, I think Death Stranding was also ported over there, an Assassin's Creed game. And that's because it's not as fragmented as Android and developers aren't as wary of, you know, trying to put something out and not selling a bunch of them or maybe even selling them to people who can't really play them with lower end chipsets. So yeah, the Snapdragon 8 Elite, this is definitely going to be a game changer for Android. And I think something like this might get more developers on board for creating bigger, better applications and games for Android. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Again, I'll have a few videos coming up very soon, so keep an eye on the channel. Got a lot of x86 emulation that I want to show off with this thing. And if you got any questions, let me know down in the comments below. But like always, 
Thanks for watching.